What's up guys, Drake Helch here, and today we are gonna be talking about light key. Now, this is not a sponsored video, but I have been seeing light key, which is a lighting software pop up all over the place. And so I thought I would dig in and give it a shot and see what I think of it. Um, I already think it feels a little uh, like maybe prosumer or consumer, um, small church, small venue. Um, it seems volunteer friendly, but it doesn't seem like it has all the pro tools that uh, a console like MA or Onyx would actually have. It doesn't even seem like it's laid out the same way at all. So um, if you don't know what light key is, have it right here. Um, it's not a free software. Well, okay, there's a free version of it, um, but if you buy the license, you can get half a universe for $80 a year, and you can get a full universe for $120 a year. Now, this is something to note because you still have to buy a dongle like this Entech DMX Pro that I have over here. Um, it's a USB to DMX dongle. You still have to buy that, which is, this one's $250. Some of them are $100. Um, but then you have a yearly fee as well. So it's just something to note. Um, software like Onyx is completely free and you just have to buy the dongle or the console to go with it. So there's no yearly fee. So that's just something to note uh, about this software. But uh, let's dive in and uh, this is going to be me reacting to uh, how the software is. Now I have slightly played with the patching and the connectivity of the Entech because uh, it wasn't working earlier and so I fixed it. Um, a classic reboot your computer fixed it. So that's great. This is a Mac only software. So we're gonna dive right in and I'm gonna show you what I know and then what I think about the rest of it. So uh, let's start a new project here. Like project, sure. Okay, boom, Entech USB Pro device. So it already found my USB device, uh, which is really cool. You can use Artnet, streaming ACN. Um, or an offline mode. So it found my device, so I'm gonna go ahead and select my device. So what you see on your screen here is the patch. Now, it's kind of weird that the first thing that pops up is your patch, but I kind of get it at the same time. If you're not used to lighting software at all, you're not gonna really know to go to your patch. So I guess this makes sense, but usually uh, when I open up Onyx or MA, it launches into the window that you can do anything with and you have to go into the menu to go into your patch. But again, if you're not used to that, I guess, guess this makes sense. So has a lot of fixtures in here. We're gonna patch a generic fixture first. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this is that you can't see how many channels of one of these fixtures is, especially the generics right off the bat. You can in the next step, but not in the first step. So I don't, didn't even know that this power wash was one channel until I tried to patch it. I would like to know that it's one channel or three channels before I try to patch it, or at least give me the information about it. So if we drag and drop it into channel one here, then it shows up that it is starting at one, the account is one, and it's just one channel right here. It shows one channel. So I wish it showed that one channel beforehand, so that way I knew that this was a single channel fixture. Does that make sense? Um, that's user error. So we're gonna patch this one fixture, boom. That's that light over there, which is not on. And then we're gonna patch this, which is a Chevet fixture. So if we search Chevet, and then um, this is a Slimpar, boom, right there. So again, this fixture has a three channel mode and a seven channel mode. And so it's kind of, I understand why it's not here, but I wish it was there. Cause I have to drag it in, cool. Now I can select three or 12 channel, three or seven channels, sorry. So the other bummer that I don't like is you can't like type in wash and then add a number. You have to use like a letter. I want to spell it out with a number, but you can go past four characters. So W1 for wash one, starting at two, count one. I'm actually gonna add four for our demonstration, even though I can only see one. And yes, okay, patch. Okay, we're gonna go next. 
build your preview. Okay, so as you can see here, I have my par, which is this, and then my wash. So we're gonna actually drag the par over here because that's where it is. We're gonna center these washes up. That looks centered to me. And our par's over here. Okay, next. So this is like what your layout view or your 3D view in Onyx would be or your layout view in MA would look like. Uh, it wants you to set it first. I get it. Uh, it wants you to move the fixtures around how they would be in your room. Select your fixture groups. Okay, so we're gonna group those together. Um, how do you add this to a group now? Do I click next? Like back, okay. Create groups of fixtures that'll be together. Okay, there's a group. How do I make them a group? Group, oh, okay. So there's a group of fixtures and then I can do this as well. And, oh, I can't make an all group. Maybe I can't later make an all group. That's interesting. Okay, so I have a wash group. Okay, next. So set the beam. So, oh, okay. Oh, interesting. So yeah, let's make the beams go straight forward, done. And this one, we're gonna set the beams going, oop, that way, done. Okay, next. Please set the beam color for the fixtures. Uh, set. It's because this is an RGB. I'm guessing it wants me to like make a color. Okay. It's kind of CTO. Next. That's it. Have fun creating light shows with light key. Go. All right. This is as far as I know. I've done that before. Um, so now, fully have not done anything else in this software. Um, so I can see. How do you move around? You can't move around. Interesting, okay. I can't center this up. Um, okay, so I can see that my washes are blue, which is why that's blue, and that is not on. Okay, the dimmer is on. Boom, okay, sorry, my dimmer was not set correctly. But now I should have control of this. I do have control of that. Okay, cool. So now, I should also have control of these. Yep, I do. So my first question off the bat here is I grouped my wash fixtures and I can control the, the intensity here. But what if I want to control one? Interesting. Hmm, okay. This is already weird to me <laughs> because Usually on a professional lighting software, you have in faders or encoders, which those faders can be anything. They can be submasters, groups, group masters, effects, anything you want to, and you have them all right in front of you. Usually you have faders and buttons. And here it's like so dumbed down, which might not be a bad thing that like your, your fader is right here, but I can't show a list of them. I don't know. This is kind of weird. So we're going to try to figure out how to do this together. Um, so obviously I can control the dim. I can control the color. Very, very easy. Um, I could strobe them if I want to. That's cool. Strobe speed. Drag the mouse up or down to change the speed. Very cool. <laughs> Open. Close. Can't close it. Pulse. Okay, I can just strobe it and open it, cool. Okay, so their palettes are what a palette should be. You can put your palette into a queue, which is proper lighting programming. So create some presets for me. Interesting. So it created intensity for my fixture over there and colors So, okay, so it created presets for me, for my lights, automatically. Wow, interesting. And it is running that only in the fixture programmer. Okay, so 
This is super interesting because on a real console, you can add a ton of things to your programmer. Um, and then when you record that, that you could record all of that that you just did to a queue or a fader or something. And what it looks like is that it's only letting you update one thing at a time because it took that out of the programmer. And when I put that there, it took those out of the programmer. So it's kind of like helping you out to not have to think as much about those things, which is interesting. So now that I have that, what can I do with that? Um, about fully customizable panel with buttons to control your lights during a show. So, um, front light. Um, oh, so it looks like you can do buttons and faders and controls. Create a button. Let's create a button. Master, 100%. Enter a name and press return. So how do I, okay, master. So let's do par 100. So now what do I do with this? Options, fade in. Okay, so you can add your fade in time, your fade out time. Horizontal. Okay, so I can change it to be a fader or a button. So let's make it a fader. I can. Make it as big as I want here, cool. Modifiers. Okay, cool, make it a dimmer. Options, okay, done. So then how do I tell it that I want it to be these? So again, I can do those and I can do Shift D and go up with it. Now, if I would just want to save that, how do I record it? Hmm. So typically on a lighting software, I would take what I just did, which is turn that up and at a hundred and I would make that and I would store that to this fader. Oh, wait, what is it controlling? controlling that, but I don't want it to control that. Oh, I see what I did. So if I select this, wait, new button. Oh, uh, so if I do select these and I do a new button, par 100, or I can do wash 100, let's try that. and I want it to be another fader. Done, okay. Okay, that's interesting. So it's like gathering information. This is so, 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 so interesting. Okay, so I wanna store color buttons now. So, new button, so color, so let's do wash color. I'm gonna try to do multiple things with this one. So if I wanna do a wash color, cool, cool. And I want this to be a bunch of cues so I can like cycle through my colors. Um, options, fading, okay. Color automatic, oh, interesting. Oh, so that's the color of it. Okay, that's cool. So let's leave it white. Behavior toggle, nice. So I want it to do color. So, all right. Now that I'm done with that. So if I do this and I make it that, how do I store that? I'm already frustrated. <laughs> The funny thing is, is that I am so used to using a pro level console like Onyx or MA, that this is unintuitive to my brain because consoles like Onyx, MA, Hog, they all kind of 
act the same way with the programmer, the cue list, the faders, encoder buttons, all those kinds of things are all kind of the same. This, it's like things aren't there. And that's kind of frustrating to me, but you might ha not have any experience with any lighting software and you hop on this and it might make sense in your brain because it's how your brain thinks. Okay, so this video could be hours long of me messing with this. Basically, to sum it up, light key is a very simplified, dumbed down version of pro lighting softwares. There is some things like you can set fad faders. It looks like you can set things like MIDI controllers to control things, things like that. Super cool. Um, it To me, it doesn't feel intelligent and I would highly, highly push using Onyx um, just because the software is completely free. Um, you only have to buy the dongle once and you're training everyone in a pro standard. Um, there's the programmer, how the cues work, how the faders work. That is a pro standard. It's the same on Onyx, it's the same on MA, it's the same on Hog. They use different terminology, same exact idea. So for me, if I'm building a church, even a small church, or I'm building a small venue and I'm wanting to train people I would rather throw in a console or a piece of software that is in the pro line. The other thing is if you're going to rent out your facility as a venue, whether you're a church or an actual venue and you want to rent it out, more people can use things like Onyx or MA. There's been countless times where I've gone into churches and they have software like this and I just refuse to use it. I will use a dongle and my Surface Pro running Onyx before I try to use a software like this. Um, but if you have MA or Onyx, more than likely the pros coming into your facility that are paying to use your facility will use your software and might even pay to use your software. You can add on things like your lighting console, your audio console, things like that, if they're in the pro market. Um, Onyx is kind of at the lower end of the pro market, but some pros still use it and prefer it. So that's why I push Onyx all the time. It's free, it's very easy to use, but you're still training your brain and your volunteers on how to run pro lighting software.